My name is Adrienne Sicknick. I work in the Dean's Office at the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics in St at Stockton University. I just wanna welcome you to joining our live information session today. Our talk today is with Dr. Joseph Trout. He's Associate Professor of Applied Physics and the Program Coordinator. He's gonna go over um, program overviews, some career um, options, as well as a Q&A session with you. Afterwards, we have Allison, uh, on the line with us. She's the Assistant Director of Admissions. She'll be here to answer some general admissions questions for you as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Joe Trout. Hello, how's everybody doing? And I think Allison and, and Isaac, is that who is on the line? Uh, Kayla yes? and Isaac. Uh, Kayla, I'm sorry. And Isaac, and where are you both from? Or are you local or? Um, yeah, Isaac and I actually know each other. We're uh, math majors at OCC. Oh, good. Okay, so you know the area pretty well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, do you have any? So, I'll start with the presentation, and then you can, um, and then we can answer any questions you have. Right. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our okay. faculty. We have Neil, Neil Aronson, and he does acoustics. Uh, ben Aguirre, and he does quantum optics, so lasers and things like that. Um, Bang Lu does biomedical and health physics. And um, Manson, he does, he's a, he and I do research together, and he does hydraulics and hydrology and, and like the flow through streams and, and rivers and estuaries. And he's mostly a computational person. Uh, Chipra Powell is going to be retiring this year, but she is um, a solid state physicist. We have uh, Benita, and she is um, into a lot of things, including forensics physics and nuclear physics. Um, Manir Sherbin, I don't know if either of you are interested in the engineering program, but he runs our engineering program. And he does um, like finite element and, and computer aided drafting. Yitzhak Sharon is is pretty much a legend around here, and and he is he does um, nuclear physics, not um, nuclear power physics. More what's inside the nucleus and how's it held together. And Jason Shulman is is now in uh, he's back in Texas, but he helps us out. And he does things like spectroscopy and, um, and um, electro, um, like, um, electron microscopy. And I mostly do atmospheric physics, but I also uh, do astronomy and, and some other things. So I do mostly computer models. So we wanted to talk about where, one, where, where you, what you do with a, with a physics degree. About 60% of our graduates go to graduate school, and about 40% go right into um, to employment. And if we look at the employment, um, about 50% is private sector, about 13 go into college or universities, about 11% go become high school teachers, about 8% are active military, and um, about 10% go into national labs. In the private sector, if you go straight with physics or engineering, um, a lot of times you're working in development labs or um, working for the FAA in the area, and there's various projects that they work on. So if we look at the private sector, if you have a, a bachelor's degree in physics or in engineering, you're, you're about 32% are doing engineering and about 21% work with computers doing either computer management or um, writing code. And then um, about a quarter of them are non-STEM and about 5% are pure physics or astronomy where it actually, like your job title actually says physicists or astronomy. So all of these people are working with like their physics concepts, but, um, Many of them are in engineering or computer um, fields. So ours is mainly an applied physics program. So we use the fundamentals 
concepts of physics are used to actually address practical problems. Um, so for example, uh, we have, I have a student doing research right now and they have, um, they found that a lot of the community gardens in Philadelphia, which people are really becoming interested in, were having a problem with some of their crops. And we suspected that maybe it was the heat island effect. So we're looking and we're doing research, um, studying the heat island effect in Philadelphia and looking at their plants also. So we're working with the biologists also. And we have a copy of what they have in Philadelphia here in, in our farm at Stockton. And we're comparing the two as they grow. As they grow. So we're trying to use these fundamental concepts in physics to address these practical problems. And a, another, part, another student in this, this project is actually working to on computer weather models, trying to predict like when the last frost will be, so we know when to plant things. So, um, so we have all kinds of projects like this, interdisciplinary, and where we're using physics to, to um, try to solve everyday problems. So I think the things we're proudest of is that we have a really hands-on curriculum. So for instance, I teach electronics and optics and um, it's real hands-on. So I lecture for about an hour and then you spend about two hours in lab twice a week. And it, I try to make it as much hands-on as it can and real life experiences. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, I was in the Navy for about six years working in electronics and then received my PhD in Drexel and then came back and was out in industry for a really long time, well, about 12 years, and then came back to Stockton. So um, I try to make it as practical and as applied as possible. So that's just both for electronics and for optics. And there's several other courses like that. For instance, our mechanics course, um, Dr. Fang Lu teaches a medical physics course that's very applied and with physics concepts. Um, we also are find computational skills very important. So like I said, I do computer modeling and so does Manson and, and Manier also. So these are problem solving with computers. And we also, like through your whole, all the courses that you will take at Stockton, you'll be doing using computers to help solve the problem. So we still do analytic um, equations where you work with the equations and then find a solution. But we also do a lot of um, computer problem solving and modeling through computers. So if you look at our basic curriculum, Right, the main thing is classical mechanics and then quantum mechanics where you start to, to look at particles as waves, right? And then classical mechanics, you're looking at particles as particles, right? And then we look at uh, electricity and magnetism and thermal physics. And then there's some other courses um, that, are, that you'll take in your curriculum, um, optics and electronics, um, electrical circuits, mathematical physics, and research methods and colloquium. And um, colloquium is where we have people from outside at the, in, in industry or else at other colleges doing research come in and talk to you. And that runs every other week on, on Monday and we have pizza and, and the person comes in and talks to you, it describes their research or their job, and then you can come and ask them questions. Research methods, we're really into research. In fact, um, I have students that started their second semester of their freshman year doing research with me. And um, one of those projects was to rebuild the um, observatory and, um, and the telescope. So we had a really nice telescope that was really old and they rebuilt it. So I really like students to get involved in research as, as early as possible. So here's just a breakdown. This is on the website, so you can go back and look at it. What you see, you know, normally your first year you'll take physics one and two and calculus one and two, and then 
calculus three and then um, differential equations, and then go into your upper level physics courses like classical mechanics, electronics and optics, um, and quantum mechanics. So like I said, these you can just look up and on the website and see um, the courses that we offer. We also have something called G courses, and these are general courses. And um, the difference from other colleges is that these courses have to be interdisciplinary. And I'll describe a couple of them to you. And um, you have to take a certain number of these, so 32 credits, and, and in these different types of G courses. Like I said, this colloquium, it's intended for um, anyone interested in physics. And it's where we talk about new discoveries and new topics, and people come in and discuss their research and their jobs. I, I don't know if either one of you are interested in engineering, or are you, or? Well, if you are, here's a list of the engineering courses. So not only do we have to go through, um, uh, you take the normal physics courses, and what happens is you spend half the time at Stockton, and then half of the time at either NJIT or Rutgers or Rowan. And the idea is that you take all your physics courses at, at Stockton. And the good thing is, is that a lot of our, like the physics courses are going to be the same no matter where you are. All of our physics instructors have, have taught at larger universities. I came from Drexel University, for example. And um, so, it's good to go to Stockton. It's a little more, less expensive. You're gonna have smaller class sizes. So for instance, when I used to teach engineers at uh, Drexel, I'd be lecturing to like 260 engineers in a lecture room. And here, our classes are about 35. So um, I think it's a lot better that way. Like I, I only got to know the top three students and the bottom three students, right, in that class. So because there's just so many people that it's hard to get to know everybody. But the, um, what you come out with is a Bachelor of Physics from Stockton, and then a Bachelor of Engineering from the other school that you transfer into. As uh, engineering majors, if you were to go into that, you also have to take a management course and an economics course, um, because you're gonna be engineers. You're gonna have to look at total projects, right? And how much the project costs and how you're going to get the project finished. So here's these general studies courses that were that are unique to Stockton and really interesting. So they're taught by all members of the faculty from all different schools. And occasionally we'll get, you know, different departments will get together and design a course that's, that, that comes out to be really interesting. And the courses might study a problem or a theme or, or survey some related topic. And they're de designed to just explore ideas, right, and to stimulate critical thinking. And here's the different types, right? There's some for humanities, and there's some for interdisciplinary skills. Um, the general integration and synthesis is like a senior project or a senior course that ties everything together. And then we have general um, natural science and mathematics and some social and behavioral science. And you have to take a certain number of courses in each one of these. So here's some good examples. One of the ones that I like that I teach, it's called severe weather and climate. And first we look at all the concepts of physics and weather that, that how tornadoes form and how hurricanes form. Well, we also look at things like, um, you know, we live on a, the Jersey Shore and we want to see what the current research that's being done on how to protect houses and, and what we should be doing to protect the, the waterfront. Because we know there's going to be a hurricane every once in a while and houses are going to be destroyed and beachfronts are going to be destroyed. So let's see, let's keep an eye on all the research that's going on. So we talk about that. We also talk about climate. So in this course, um, you're given like 100 years of data and asked to just look at it and see what your ideas are about how the climate's changing. So you'll be given 
they're given two locations in the globe, and then you compare those two and see what's happening. Um, Neil teaches, or Dr. Aronson teaches one on sound, music, and hearing. So his research is with the Navy, and he does something with um, um, submarines and, and actually how people hear in the submarines. So he teaches a course called Sound, Music, and Hearing that looks at physics and acoustics. Um, Yitzhak teaches one on Man Atom Universe that covers everything from black holes to UFOs, right? And Dr. Fang Lu teaches the medical technology and teaches about fiber optics and lasers and ultrasounds and you know how these are used to, to help um, medicine. I teach a course in general astronomy that's, that's of course at night. And the good thing is, is that we have an a observatory right here on campus and several smaller um, telescopes. And um, so that's really interesting. And it's, it's more of a fun part of my job. And I also teach a course called the science of ice cream. So we've been getting into food physics for a little while. And um, a food scientist and a chemist and I designed this course that looks at the science of ice cream. And there's all kinds of interesting things about ice cream. That, and we talk about food safety and sensory analysis. And we actually have labs where we make ice cream, right? And at the end, everybody has to, the different lab groups get together and they design their own ice cream and we have a little contest. Like I said, an important thing at Stockton is undergraduate research. So everybody that's a physics major has to complete an undergraduate research project. And um, so like I said, it's available from our freshman year. So I have two students, Gracie and, and Courtney, who started the second year, the second semester of their freshman year. And they are both working on the telescope. And then Gracie is also working on looking at data from the Hubble T Space Telescope. And Courtney is working on that project involved with the, um, with the uh, community gardens in Philadelphia. So we have uh, lots of publication and presentation opportunities. So we just submitted papers for um, the work with the Hubble T Space Telescope. And we have um, also, um, some students and I have, pre have published papers in physics education also. So our students have all presented at the American Physical Society and the American Association of Physics Teachers, um, NJ Edge, which is a New Jersey research and education network, and the Society of Physics Students. So this is called SPS. There's also an honor society called Sigma Pi Sigma. And also we have times when you could present your research at Stockton. And all of our students, I mean, not all of our students, most of our students have presented at these conferences. So for example, I, I told that Dr. Manson and I worked with the project with the FAA. And I don't know if you know this, but how close you can land planes together depends on these wake vortices that come off the back of the planes. So this was actually, the students that were working with me were actually paid by the FAA. So that was really good. And what we were doing was looking at how the weather affect this work, wake turbulence. So if you look at coming off the back of the planes, you get these vortices that, that kind of spin around. And if you get a plane caught in there, they can get forced to the ground or get forced to turn. So they, the planes have to be landed a certain amount, a certain distance apart. And we're looking at how the weather affects that. And I personally don't want them landing planes any closer together, but it would be nice to know that if one was in trouble, we could get it out of the air without causing any further damage, right? Without risking their, um, you know, risking the lives of the people even further. This is more about that. So one of the students, actually had to digitize the airport. And what you're seeing here are, are some flows that go over um, the airport. And this was um, presented to the American Physical Society. 
Um, I also am interested in, in uh, weather patterns. So this was some research that a student presented um, at the APS again. And here's some, we also do education research. So this was looking at online books and their use in undergraduate physics classes. So, um, so I'm really into using free textbooks and helped write a physics with calculus one for a place called um, um, OpenStax. That's O-P-E-N-S-T-A-X. If you're looking, ever looking for some good free textbooks, look onto that website and, and you'll see um, some really good work that's being done. Um, this is part of the tomato research. So we just planted just the other day, uh, planted the plants to, to um, both at Stockton and in Philadelphia to work and check out the climate in Philadelphia and how it compares to the climate here. So Stockton's a teacher scholar model. So all of our professors are teachers. So if you go to places like Drexel, a professor might teach one course and then the rest of their time they're expected to do research. We value research and teaching equally important. So we know they're both important and um, our professors are working professionals and they're engaged in scholarship and doing research. And we also take care of a part in college governance. So we help design, you know, we take help um, govern the college um, and in areas that for things like parking problems and things like that. So like I said before, here's some of the things we're interested in, nuclear physics, optics, material science, biomedical, condensed matter, and atmospheric physics and all of these um, people are actively doing research here. Um, what we want our students to walk out of here with is, of course, mathematical competence. So this is um, more than just being able to work with equations. We want you to be able to look at data and start to model that data and make predictions, for instance, with the climate, right? And we want you to have good oral and written skills. So how we accomplish that is through your research, right? Through writing these papers to present at conferences and presenting these your concepts to to other physicists, and um, we also think it's important to work independently and also in groups. So we we um, really emphasize that. Like I said, data interpretation. In fact, we have a master's in data analysis and big data. That's the the um, catchphrase nowadays, right? But if you think about it, it, for instance, if you're looking at the climate, and I keep going back to weather only because that's my field, but we have tons of data that needs to be analyzed. And, and uh, so this is an important part of your physics education. And of course, creativity. So um, we also, have a really active society of physics students. And it's really good to get involved with them right away, like as soon as you get to Stockton. And they have this uh, like a little room that they all study in, all the physics students get together and they help one another out. They also um, have community support. So for instance, they, they do tutoring of um, undergraduate students. And they also have external events and trips. So for instance, last, or yeah, it was last summer, they went to CERN and had an excellent trip to uh, see the particle accelerator. And we also remember, we also have a strong Sigma Pi Sigma National Lion Society. And in fact, we just had the induction ceremony and award ceremony just um, last week. And sadly, it had to be online because everything's online right now. But it was, um, we gave out um, about a dozen awards and also our Sigma Pi Sigma Honor Society, people were inducted into it. I'm really into service learning. And for instance, this was a service um, learning opportunity that we had. We had students build a computer lab for an inner city school that didn't have a lot of money. 
So we got a grant for computers and then we set up their computer lab. Oh, and for furniture and, and installed all the computers for them. And this was um, through one of my physics courses. And here's another service learning opportunity. My physics one class, what we do is hold a um, day of physics for a seventh and eighth grade students. And the idea is that, that instead of me doing the demonstrations in my physics class, I teach groups of students how to do the demonstration and they present it to, the, to our class. And then at the end of the semester, we have this day of science for the seventh and eighth graders. And here shows somebody doing the human gyroscope. And um, you can see the, the older people are my students and then the younger people are the seventh and eighth graders that are coming to see it. And they also, um, then we have lunch and pizza and a, a, a chemist comes down and makes liquid nitrogen ice cream for dessert. And the seventh and eighth graders get to talk to the college students and they tell them about their, their majors. So um, just some more pictures for that. Everybody really enjoyed the human gyroscope because you get to stand on a rotating platform and although this is a still shot, what happens when you turn the bicycle wheel, you start spinning around. It shows them making the liquid nitrogen ice cream for dessert. Right? And then you finish up making a, uh, a um, little apparatus that projects what we call Lissage's figures. So what it does is gives you a little laser design show, right, or a laser show and they um, hook together motors and lasers and things like that. And I love that one person who just looks exasperated. And the person that's standing up, of course, is one of the students in the class, in my class. So where do our students end up? So we end up at Drexel, and that's where I finished my um, PhD. Um, NGIT, some people go right into Stockton to the graduate program in data analysis. And we go to University of Measure, Maryland and Columbia University Rutgers. And um, one thing I forgot to mention is that after I came out of the Navy, I went to Stockton as an undergraduate. So I actually finished my undergraduate work at Stockton, then went to Drexel to get my graduate work done, and then went out to industry for a while and then came back to Stockton. So that's pretty much uh, the presentation. Um, do you have any questions for for me or for admissions or? Kayla had a couple questions while you were talking and maybe oh, good. you can answer them. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. That's okay. Kayla, did you want me to ask or, or do you want to open your mic and ask Dr. Trout uh, your questions? Um, I guess I can ask. Okay. okay. Um, so... You talked about the physics colloquium. Um, is yes. that open to anyone um, if we're not a physics major? Yes, yes, actually okay. it is. So you can actually, um, we, okay, so it's a zero credit class. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to pay for it, but, okay. and, but you still, it'll still end up on your transcript that you've attended. And, um, and really for that course, the only thing we, the only assignment really is that um, after you attend the, um, the talk, then you write up like a half page summary or questions or something you found interesting. And in fact, I do it um, through a blog. So everybody can, they, they you can talk to one another, the other people in the class. So, um, so like I said, it's a zero credit course but everybody's welcome to take it. Anybody interested in physics? Oh, that's great, thank you. Um, and then I had one more question. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about picking up physics as a minor, um, yes. but whether I do or not, I was just wondering if you knew anything about research opportunities that are like open to any majors? Um, yes. Like if I wanted okay. to do something, so, but not in my field. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, I, um, the one, my once research student, Courtney, is actually a biology major and a physics minor, and she was interested in um, 
but she wanted to be, she's actually working on two projects. One of it is that she's been really involved in the observatory. So she loves astronomy, but she wants to be a doctor. That's why she's getting a, a, a dual degree or a, a, my, a major in biology and a minor in physics. But she also works on that project that involves um, the biology aspect. So the community gardens in, in, um, in Philadelphia. There's another student who is um, working on a project with a chemist and I, and we're looking at um, wheat that's been grown locally versus wheat that's, that's been, um, that's commodity wheat, you know, like King Arthur or something like that. And we're looking at the, the differences in the amount of vitamins that are involved in each. And she does, and she actually last year got a $2,000 reward for the work she was doing on that project. And it's completely interdisciplinary. We also have students that um, um, work with another professor, and I don't know exactly what they're doing, but they do something with um, the tidal basins here, and they model how the tidal basins are being affected. So that's another inter interdisciplinary thing that, that's been going on. Um, trying to think, can you think of anything else, Adrian, that, I've, that I, anybody else that's... Um, yeah, that's all I can think of at the moment, but I'm sure I'll come up with some more. I, I, so we have a lot. Is that the question you're asking, though? Is it interdisciplinary? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And we also have pure physics projects going on, too. So I don't want to make that sound like that that's not happening either. So, um, um, so there's some surface physics that was going that they were doing research on using the electron microscope. So I know a couple more people I think came on the call, but I wanted to tell you um, how, if you're not from this area, how wonderful and beautiful Stockton is. We have a, a beautiful lake in the back. If you like to run or bike, there's beautiful trails for you to go around. We're, what, maybe 15 minutes from the ocean and the beaches, and we have a beautiful campus in Atlantic City. And I, I've also taught at that campus, and it's right on the right on the boardwalk and right on the beach. And um, it's just, just a really nice place. You're also less than 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Well, that's not true. It's a little longer than 30, I guess about I was gonna ask how fast you yeah. drive that right, is right, right, right. <laughs> that was probably a little too much. time travel there. But, uh, right. <laughs> Timing is not my, my greatest strength, but there's also a, a, a train that goes between um, Egg Harbor, which is close to Stockton, and Philadelphia. And um, so there's lots of things to do in Philadelphia also. But. I was going to say, we also... I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, no, so I just, I have a question that I get a lot from um, the admission side that I wanted to ask you. So why would you say a student should choose Stockton? I hear all these great options, but what makes right. you happy? You have um, experience at other universities, so I want to hear from you. Why would you tell a student to choose Stockton? Yes. Two, the two main things are we have small classes, and you get to know the professors right away. And um, I think that helps a lot. So if you're a strong student, it's great because you get to learn about their research and get, get started. If you're not as strong of a student, you'll get help, and you'll get you will bring you up to the to speed on the things you need to be brought up to speed on so if your math's a little weak we'll get just we'll get you help in math and you'll get to know the professors and you know um it's not it, like, at drexel for instance it's really hard to get to see your instructor because there's, there's 300 people that that they have to deal with and if um it, it, it's really hard to get to see them so i think the small class size I think also that you can start, like I said, doing research as a freshman, if, especially if you're a really great student. And there's many opportunities. So, and, it, and um, if you're a little nervous about it, there's small things we can get you started on and then, and then learn about it. So, for instance, the people that work at the observatory, they've never worked at an observatory before. So we train you how to, to do it. 
And there's lots of opportunities like that. So for instance, um, the observatory, we have opening observing nights for um, the public. And uh, my students go and show them how to use the telescopes and, and show them what's going on. And I think that's really special about Stockton. And like I said, the location's great. It's just a beautiful place. And so those, at least those three things, small classes, research, and it's a beautiful place. Yeah, I think those are, those are great points. Um, and I always tell students too, because, you know, internships is this, um, or experience, research, those are like these hot button ish, uh, hot buttons, like buzzwords. But what do they right. actually mean is that when you go to apply for jobs, a lot of times it says, you know, you need a year of a research experience, a year of this, a year of that. Well, how, how are you supposed to get that when you're in college? Well, this is how you do that. And this is, I'm always telling students, this is that, that's how you reach that experience level before going out into the field is to go out into the field with a professor and work on a project. So I think that that's huge. Right. And I think another thing is that I, and I don't want to make it sound like I was putting Drexel down because it's a great place to go to graduate school and I highly recommend it, but I am glad that I went to Stockton as an undergraduate and I learned a lot and I was, um, you know, other people that had been to larger schools, they hadn't had the chances that I had. So um, they're both beautiful schools and it's a great place to go to graduate school. So I would go to a smaller college to start out with and get lots of opportunities and then go to a larger college with a, you know, to graduate school because we don't have a graduate program. Yeah, Dr. Scout, I, um, I, I definitely that what we try and stress in admissions is that it's all about fit for the student. So if you're looking for a smaller school setting, that's that's us, small, rural, um, that, you know, Drexel is, a, is an opposite. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just we have the two different, um, you know, there's yeah. different options in our area. So. Right. And don't forget, even though what, like I said, uh, the students that are working in Philadelphia and things, they you know, we have um, connections with the big city and things. It's not, I, we're in a very rural area, but like I said, everything's really close and, um, and we work with other colleges and things. But, so I think that's a, another really important part. Joe, also when uh, students go to conferences, uh, there's opportunity for funding through Stockton, correct? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so sadly, so, I actually had six students going to conferences to give um, presentations for their research, but sadly, everything was canceled this year. So um, yes, and um, there are grants. There's grants to go to the conferences. We also have something called Research Undergraduate Experience Grants. So the students, um, we get some money to do research with. So if you have a good idea, then um, you can get money from the college to help out with it. So for instance, the, you know, I keep talking about my, my projects because I know the most about them, but three of my students got research undergraduate um, grants to do the research. One involved the Kepler Sky Teles Space Cut Telescope, the one, the, um, and what we're working on with the tomatoes and, and climate change in Philadelphia. And we also have somebody that's designing an astronomy course and she also, she also received a grant for a travel to go to the conference to present the, the um, course we're writing. Oddly enough, we were writing an online course for astronomy. That was what her project was. And it came in useful when we had to go onto line, online because we had a lot of it done already. And the conferences could be all, all around the country, correct? Uh, yes, yeah. So um, this year it was in Maryland. And there was one in Denver. They're, yeah, they're all over the place. And the National Chemical Society had two students present there last year. That was in Boston. And this year, sadly, it was right in Philadelphia. So we had a whole bunch of people going. But sadly, it was canceled. So, But, and, um, but they'll be back up again. We actually had virtual ones, virtual meetings. But 
not as much fun as going to the conferences themselves. And the physics club, you don't have to be a physics major to be in the physics club, correct? Oh no, there's lots of, there's lots of, not lots, there's a few students that are not physics majors that are in the, the physics club. And so, the trips uh, associated with the club, they could, you could also go on those trips as well if you're not in physics, through the physics club. Yes. Okay. Yep. And that's like the one to CERN, I don't know exactly how much the students cost, but, but it was like two or three hundred dollars maybe. So the college paid for a lot of that. I don't remember exactly how much it was. But. And that was to Switzerland, uh, correct? Yes. Yep. To see the, the large um, particle accelerator. So anything else I could tell anybody about? Anybody, anything that you're interested in? We also have a, a, uh, a great track that if you like to run or, or um, and nice facilities to work out in and basketball courts and all kinds of other things. But, uh, yep. We also have the new building, USC2 opened up oh, yeah. in 2018. Uh, yeah. It's home to the physics program. Um, right. It has a chemistry lab and a, I think a bio lab in there as well. Uh, our greenhouse, uh, the vibranium. Yeah. And you can see a virtual tour of that on the NAMS. NAMS is the acronym for Natural Sciences and Mathematics at Stockton. So if you come to Stockton, there's a lot of acronyms for our schools. Um, but if you go to uh, stockton.edu forward slash sciences dash math, there's a, a virtual tour of USC2 facility. Yeah, also, I, just, yeah. I wanted sorry. to hop on real quick and just make sure. I, I think Kayla and Isaac, you're uh, transfer students. Um, so I just wanted to see as far as admissions, if you had any questions there or I could help you through the application process. Dr. Trout has done an excellent job as far as telling you about the location of Stockton. I mean, now I'm kind of worried because, you know, I mean, it sounds like he could, he could do my job and, uh, and you know, tell me how my table works too. <laughs> so, so, and predict weather patterns and everything. So um, I... I, I really appreciate all of that, Dr. Trout, and I just wanted to make sure that um, Absolutely. we didn't have any questions that we could answer as far as the application process. Have both of you applied? Are you looking to apply? Is there anything I can help you with with that process? If you want to either chat it or you can unmute your mic. Are you admitted students? Um, I actually have a question about that. Um, so. I applied last semester um, for the spring and I ended up okay. deferring and now mm -hmm. I'm in the process of, I guess, reapplying. And I'm just wondering what that is. Like, is that a whole new application? So if you only deferred for one semester, did you attend another university at that time? I did. I went to OCC. Okay. So you will need to reapply since you did, um, since you did, attend another university, but the best way to reach us and to get any information so that I'm not taking time over from this is just to tell us it's admissions with an S A D M I S S O N S at stockton.edu. And I'll put it, Oh, Adrian beat me to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I would just email us and make sure that, um, we have everything from you. Uh, we will need those OCC credits as well. And just so you know, um, we are pretty much every year awarded one of the most transfer friendly universities in the state, if not the most transfer friendly. Um, so we really work with our transfers with those upper level classes. Um, we do hold some spots to make sure that you, you don't have as many issues and there's a smooth transition into coming into um, those courses. I've worked transfer orientation, so I know that the professors are really there to help you um, select those courses and, and, and help you out with that. Um, one other area I thought Dr. Trout might wanna talk about is one of my favorite things about our university, which is precepting and preceptors. Yeah, so um, the idea is that you have somebody a guide or, or um, advisor for you to um, to deal with, and and you meet with them for at least once a, a semester 
or as many times as you want, but we actually cancel classes for a day for you to go and talk to your advisor, right? And um, the idea is, to, you know, we do help you pick out your courses, but that's not the main idea. It's mainly just to check in and see how, how things are going and, and to get you any help that you need or um, help you to make decisions about, you know, things like what um, summer internships to do or, or things like that. And um, I can't think of anything else. Is that a second? So <laughs> Maybe I, you can I elaborate on huge, that. But. I think it's huge to have a professional mentor in your field. Um, and that's not something that a lot of other schools offer. So your actual advisor, there's an advising office, but then your actual advisor is going to be someone in your field. You can request a certain professor if you work well with them. Um, but you can also um, talk to them about pretty much anything in the field. Um, I know that depending on how close you are with your preceptor, they have really helped find um, professional opportunities for students, as well as align you with professors that have your same interests. So say, I, I don't know much about science or math or things like that. I was a social scientist, social scientist. Um, but say you're really interested in um, food and chemistry, food, food related physics. Maybe Dr. Trout would, as your advisor, as your preceptor, tell you exactly who, oh, well, this person used to work for Kellogg's. So I can tell you a little bit about this class. So make sure you take this professor or let me get you involved with that person. And that's where precepting is huge because just like I talked about before, you look at jobs, no one's asking for zero years experience. <laughs> so you wanna make sure you get that experience when you're in college and that, you know, that, really, that really does transfer and it's really helpful, I think, for our students. I think Isaac had a question, Allison, that you may be able, be able to answer uh, about transferring his AP credits from high school as well as his OCC credits. Yes, I, um, I, I told him to just email us. Uh, we have a, a form for AP credits as well, though, that I will just, since we're on here now. So if you go on Stockton's website, there's a certs function at the top. And um, if you're on the mobile site, you have to hit like three lines up at the top and then it comes up. But um, if you put in there AP courses, you can see what they transfer as. Also, since um, I believe both of you are at the uh, community college, county college level, you can also go to that search box and type in degree works and that will show you exactly how your courses will transfer from OCC. Um, and then any individual questions would just be best answered um, at the admissions email. And we usually get to them within 24 hours. So I'm familiar with TREC. Uh, is that different? Because I'm on the degree works. I, I shared the screen so they could see. Um, so I typed in degree works um, and I see the tool, but it's asking me to log in. I'm familiar with TREC, which they would be, it would be applicable uh, to um, these students because it's the um, transfer tool. Oh, see, thing. we always use, I learn something new every day. We always tell them to refer to degree works and degree works, once they um, create their application, they have a login. Exactly, yeah. And there is a free way to use it, um, but it's as, not as user friendly. It doesn't save everything. Yeah, um, I, this doesn't save either, but um, like Allison see, said. See, it takes you right to degree works. Yeah, if you have, the top. yeah, if you have, um, if you already applied and you have an account, then you'll have degree works. But this is another way uh, that I've learned that you can go in and um, do your transfer equivalencies and see what the program is. Um, and you can, you can just continue, you can either log in if you have an account or uh, without um, a sign in. And it'll just put you through the steps, what you want to declare as your major, uh, a minor, if you want to declare a minor, et cetera. And when you're coming in, it will just show you uh, what the curriculum is for um, for the year. So, so just to help. not confuse students, this is actually, this is DegreeWorks. I don't know if Stockton maybe calls it TREX. 
Um, yeah, just it, so students know it's the same. Um, this this takes you to the same place. This is great because this you can like use without logging in. Correct. Yes. So if, if for students, prospective students that don't have an account, but either way you could log in from this way. Um, and the other thing that I was sharing, um, so the acronym NAM, so N-A-M-S, um, you could type that in the search bar and you'll get natural sciences and mathematics uh, and go to our program page. Applied physics is the name really of the program. And you click on it. Uh, we just did a nice program video. Um, this is one of the students that helped with the observatory. If you scroll down, you could get some more information about the program. And our faculty now is listed on the program page and uh, they have a profile page. So if you click on them, most of them do, they'll give you a little biography about them, their areas of expertise, classes taught, um, and also their research interests and publications. So that might help you, um, Kayla, you were mentioning that you were interested in research, so that might give you a little uh, more information on how to find some areas of interest uh, that are in physics, but also in some of our other programs. So they all can be found on each program uh, webpage. So just scroll down to faculty and you can look them all up and, and see what they have to offer. And I know a lot of faculty, Joe, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, they do research throughout the summer and sometimes our faculty have a hard time finding students that want to do research during the summer. So there are opportunities yeah. for you to research before you even start Stockton in the fall. Right. So for instance, last summer, we actually was able to pay some of my students. So they were doing research in, um, in the areas that I already talked about. But uh, so we had a grant and they got about they worked for about 10 hours a week for at about $10 an hour. So that's available, but definitely look at that. Um, if I could really, uh, the video that's on the website that Adrian just talked about, she did a really good job putting it together. And I, I think you'd really enjoy it if you go ahead and take a look at it when you, you know, after the call's over. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. And Dr. Sharon, uh, Yitzhak Sharon, that uh, Joe was mentioning earlier, he is a wonderful, sweet professor. He's been here since, what, day one? Yeah. yeah literally. And uh, he was born on leap year, so he's really only in his 20s. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but he has a great class. He has a great GNM class that people would give their firstborn to get into. He makes it um, right. entertaining and uh, explains physics physically explains physics so it's pretty right. I was actually his teaching assistant when I was an undergraduate so and I it's been a little while since I went to undergrad as I was an undergraduate but, but uh Yitzhak's a great guy I would never know that about you Joe yeah. I noticed I noticed that we had the nutty professor on the slides right, right. Yeah. I don't want them to expect that we have him here in person at Stop. Right. Did anybody have any additional questions they wanted to ask? Oh, when can transfer students begin registering? Was that, somebody answered that already? I think Allison did, yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, once a student, and I can answer it on here too, it probably will make a little more sense. So once a student is admitted, um, then we do need them to uh, deposit or confirm in our admissions language that they're attending. And then we usually send out our orientation schedules and things um, late May, early June, um, and then they will be in July. We are, just for full transparency, planning to do them online this year, um, just with safety concerns and then moving forward, we are getting closer to July. <laughs> Um, so we did need to make that decision to uh, move those two online in hopes to have these uh, campus up and running in the fall. But that is when you would select your courses. And I think, I'm not sure, I know you're both local, but if you had um, interest in seeing a virtual tour of our housing, I believe that you can find that as well, correct? 
Allison, online, I think if you just type in housing, there should so, be. So yeah, so we actually just revamped the entire tour and used our, used our ambassadors. Um, so there are virtual tours on the Residential Life page, um, but then there is also the virtual map um, which tells them a little bit about everything on campus. And where would they find that on the Stockton, Stockton website? Um, so scroll up mm -hmm. and type in um, in the search bar virtual tour. Okay. So are we doing virtual tours of residential housing or? Um, Oh, you know what? It's interact. I'm sorry. It's called inactive map. Inactive. Interactive. Oh, interactive. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> map. This is it. Sorry, it's lagging a little bit. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, that first one. Three sixty. And then, yes, instead of location, you're going to go to tours, the gray area, okay. the gray, where it says tours. Yep. And then explore our campus. I'm sorry, it's lagging. I can't see what it. That's okay. What it, it's explore our campus and then residential. You can location. actually just start. You can actually just start clicking on spots and it might lag a lot because okay. it's a video of something also a video and very interactive, but it gives you an idea. Mm -hmm. um, and these are actually all our student ambassadors that did these videos while working from home. So very impressive stuff. Um, and they are kind of um, raw <laughs> and uh, homemade videos, but that, uh, that shows our personality. I think it really shows that, um, you know, Stockton is real, <laughs> we're friendly, we're approachable. Um, so a lot of those videos are, are available or becoming available as we speak today. I've seen some uploaded. Um, they will be totally uploaded. And this is my time for my little plug for my open house on uh, May 31st, they will be totally uploaded and there will be an entire virtual open house on May 31st as well. Yeah, and then there's the residential life tour as well. Yeah. Did anybody have any additional questions? Kayla was just thanking us. Okay, if, if nobody has any additional questions, I wanna thank you for joining us and we hope to see you on campus in the fall. Um, come see us, the it, Dean's office is in USC 1 there's two of them. So USC 1, USC 2. USC 1 is right across from the Campus Center. We're on the second floor. Uh, we can always help you and direct you to whatever your needs are. Uh, the physics department is located uh, in USC 2 on the second floor. Um, and I have, let me just, I think I share Dr. Trout's um, information with you. Uh, Joseph.trout at stockton.edu if you have any additional questions on physics program. So thanks again and have a great afternoon. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Please, please email admissions if you have any questions. Since both of you are transfers, I usually help freshmen. So I'm gonna let the general admissions email. But if you did want to reach me, it's just my first name dot my last name at stockton.edu as well. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Have a good afternoon. Bye.